Welcome to the San Diego County Office of Education series of videos that promote the use of restorative justice practices in our schools and homes as an effective practice to build a stronger sense of value, importance, and belonging in the members of schools and communities. This video will focus on how a mother identified that her daughter was not receiving the support she needed to thrive at school. You will hear how restorative justice practices played a part in what the mother, Janelle, and daughter, Genevieve, did to assure that Genevieve would thrive as a student and as a leader in school. We are very grateful to their family for inviting us into their home to make this video. So Janelle, we're gonna start with you. So what signs did you see that made you concerned about Genevieve at her previous school? It started in the first grade, I'm sorry, it started in kindergarten actually when her teacher was constantly reporting that just Genevieve was misbehaving, you know, she was getting the red card or the yellow card and it always felt very aggressive. It always felt very, it just like a, a punishment and at first, you know, I, I took it and I felt like, okay, what's what's going on with Genevieve, right? And at that time, there was a lot going on in the home that was really hindering, I think, Genevieve emotionally. Mm -hmm. And so through time, once she got into first grade at that school, her teacher did approach me and say, hey, I do recommend that you get her checked for ADHD. She might need to be on medication. And once I heard that, I, I didn't, I no longer felt like I had a place in that school community. I felt like we now were being put in the corner and something in me told me that this might not be the place that's gonna support my, my child and my family. And in that moment, I felt like it was important to make a decision right away in order to protect Genevieve. Mm, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Genevieve, what was going on um, for you that made you feel that something wasn't right at your first school that we were talking about? I felt very silenced. I felt that I had such a strong personality and even the students and the teachers around me, the staff, the principal, they were trying to silence me, move me to like the corner and keep me quiet. You know, they didn't want me to have such a strong personality. I felt it was being mistaken for somebody with ADHD. I feel like a lot of the times such a strong personality can be mistaken for mm -hmm. a negative trait. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So for both of you, how did you try to improve the situation um, for Genevieve in the school and what changes um, did you want to see? I, I really tried to partner with the school in, in helping them understand the circumstance at that time that we were going through and, and help them understand that these are small, innocent children that are learning their surrounding. They're so new to this whole experience of life. And I was hoping that I would get, you know, a reciprocated response in, in having that understanding. But I, it just, it wasn't it wasn't the right space for her because we kept getting a lot of pushback and it just seemed like the the instances were occurring more and more where it was easier to just put Genevieve in the principal's office mm. and write her off versus finding ways to help her restoratively in in being able to balance being an innocent child who's energetic yeah. and also learning, you know, accountability and responsibility. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, was there any, did you have any feelings of like, what did you want to change at that school? For me, I felt also being so young, it was hard to understand the level of the situation. But what I was just looking for was for somebody to support me, somebody to say, hey, like, you can put your voice here, this is what you can do, instead of just sending me to the principal's office and saying you need to stop this. You know, there was, I wanted even a student just to be like, hey, like, join this activity, this is where we can see you striving or trying to find an alternative. Mm. That's all, I just wanted a support system, but at that school it was just, you know, the traditional strict, like, go to the principal's office, you've got the red card. 
And mm -hmm. was there a, ever a point where you really kind of became conscious, like, I just don't feel like I belong? Yeah, towards the time where they were speaking about, you know, taking me out of the school, I was just, you know, I was aware that this school isn't a place where I would want to continue. I didn't feel welcome. I felt with everything going on at home also, I felt, you know, it was time to shut myself down. But, you know, I persevered and... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And then how did you come to the decision that, you know, well, we get, I think it's just time to move her to another school? When I, I wasn't feeling that partnership with the school, when I knew that it was very um, one-sided, right? And that's when I just had this urgency to I put Genevieve in a place where I knew she could where someone would help her highlight these these qualities. Um, something in me told me that what they're expressing to me is not, it's not a negative uh, trait of Genevieve's. It's actually, I know that there's something positive about being, you know, outgoing and energetic. And so I knew that I needed to change the environment and and help her feel like she's in a space that she could use that energy for good yeah instead of suppressing it absolutely so how did you both communicate and partner with your the new school so that you would be able to really get what you wanted from it for me joining a such a strong community you know it was easy for me to make friends it was easy for me to meet people and just joining groups, the ASB, the performing arts, participating in musicals and being able to, you know, do STEM, the technology, the engineering, the arts, having such a diverse community for me was a very easy way to immediately communicate with the school and create a bond and feel included with the community. I felt, you know, this this is a place where I belong, this is a place where I can express myself and my creativity. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to say, like, they, it seemed like they really invited you to become a leader very quickly. Absolutely, yes. There was so many opportunities offered, you know, joining the musicals, doing the ASB. It was offered to, you know, become a leader. And for me, I took that as an opportunity to step up and... Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. It, was, it was phenomenal because I instantly felt like we found our home. Um, and... We, it was a first, the school was an option at first, but it was barely getting it it's established. So when Genevieve entered in the second grade, now they were at um, a more established school site. And so they had more resources for families. And once we went in, it was just an instant uh, acceptance that I felt where, um, I knew that this was going to be a place of growth for me and my family. And, you know, it, it was a roller coaster because, you know, Genevieve was going through a lot and they were there along the way to, to offer a hand mm -hmm. versus, you know, yeah. put their face to the side. So it sounds like, you know, for both of you, it's important then to have a school community that doesn't expect a child to come in and just be perfect but that you're, you know because kids are going to go through their stuff and that it sounds like they truly were like almost like okay with that they were okay with walking in this journey with you as you got to the, you know, the point you are now is that right absolutely the staff the people there the students it was so easy you know if you were just having a bad day you know go to the office for the girls group to restorative teacher there, you know, she'll sit with you, she'll listen to you, a nice yoga room, a dark place to just calm down. Mm -hmm. It was a really accepting school and they really accepted that students are humans too, that students go through a lot no matter the age, young or older, you know, 16, 17 years old, that kids will always have something to go through and they really accepted that. Nice. And did you, did you both see that um, her academics actually improved? Yes, her academics improved and so did her behavior. And I think a, a lot had to do with the fact that it was more of a holistic school, mm -hmm. right? 
it wasn't just centered on academics. It was centered on wellness. It was centered on, on uh, health. And so with that, you know, you're, you're building the whole child, mm. right? You're not just focusing on, on one aspect of what they consider is their, their expectations. Mm. It's the expectation of how do we create a whole child? And that's what I really embraced and appreciated. Um, and even during the dark times at that school, it I still was, you know, receiving an open door, which was crucial in, in helping Genevieve overcome certain challenges that, you know, aren't typical of traditional schools. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I was just wondering if, if maybe, if you can even articulate this, but the difference of when you're out of school, you don't feel a sense of belonging. You don't feel that like you, whatever, um, you're engaged. Like when you're at home, a lot of times, this is my experience in helping with kids. They, they really dislike going to school during those times. But did you notice a difference when you actually were, started to engage in the new school and how, like you actually wanted to go? <clears throat> yeah, joining the new school, you know, I looked forward to going to school. I looked forward to having the people, the resources there. I loved waking up. I loved getting dressed to go to school. I was excited. The before school program, you know, getting there early to be with my friends, to be with the teachers. It was just such a welcoming place and it was something I looked forward to. Also with my academics, you know, I didn't despise doing math. I didn't despise English or, you know, my assignments. I was, it was so interactive and in that I just looked forward to being there every day. I looked forward to doing my work and improving myself. Mm -hmm. And how did you see this playing out at home? Like, cause you know, as a mother, obviously you, you, you helped her get ready for school and stuff and you've noticed probably a marked difference. What was it like for you? I was seeing this confidence in her, this, this confidence and her being able to be independent and assert herself with her voice. I think that was amazing to see her develop that. And she, she never backed down, you know, as a kid. And that's when I knew that she was, you know, the leader. And I, I give so much credit to the school for allowing her to, to be able to spotlight that uh, because, you know, children are at school eight hours out of the day. And so when her behavior started to shift, I, I backed away and allowed her to have that space to celebrate who she was becoming. Yeah. And, and it was finally she was becoming who I felt was her true self. And you could feel this happening in you, like as you started to really kind of get engaged in that school community? Yeah, I felt my personality start to become not so much of like, I'm ashamed. I started to feel like, you know, I can be myself. And definitely it was a slow process, especially in middle school at that age. You're yeah. just, you know, trying to hide yourself. But the school was such a welcoming place. And even through quarantine, you know, they still had like you could go back on campus and it still had that sense of like you're welcome here even you know when quarantine was such a hard mm -hmm. thing to go through yeah that's amazing honestly you know really when you think of it mm -hmm. that you went through the quarantine and then still she was able to thrive ultimately as a leader there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, there were um, still so many opportunities. You know, the ASB was still up. We can still do work days. I still felt involved and I still felt like I was leading even even during that hard time. Are, are you able to articulate at all? Like, what is it like when you feel the school actually values you as a leader? It feels as though you're a person. It feels as like as though I have a place, you know, in school like my mom said, is eight hours long. It's, it's your second home. And to feel like you have a place, you have a leadership, and that it's just extremely self-validating. It's really, it's really easy for you to enjoy not just the good things, but also the bad things, you know, like I have a place here mm -hmm. and it's just, it's really, it's really it's so good. powerful to hear that. And then, so my question to both of you would be, what recommendations would you make to you know, whether you're making a recommendation to a school mm -hmm. or, or, you know, like the staff there, but also to parents or other students going through this, what kinds of recommendations? 
I would say for, for parents, feel confident. In, in knowing that you are a key component in building that community with the school, right? You are not an outside entity. You know, you bring a wealth of, of knowledge to the school in being able to advocate for your child and showing them, you know, that your child has strengths that they need to use because essentially the school is a community as a whole, right? A school needs my daughter to mm -hmm. build this this community of greatness with different cultures, different personalities, and being that partner as a parent in helping that come together is crucial. And teachers can't do it without parents and parents can't do it without teachers and and be okay with being transparent and be okay with feeling confident that you can step in and say, hey, let me help and vice versa. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any, what about yourself? Also, um, <clears throat> like my mom said, you know, some parents, they give up and for the students or for the people there that have no support system, just a reminder that, you know, there will always be somebody out there that wants to support you. For me, at school especially, I had my mentors, I had my ASB leader, I had my performing arts teacher, people like me that were able to always have my back, who never gave up hope. And, you know, that there's always going to be a support system out there. Somebody will always love you. Somebody will always fight for you just to not give up. Wow, that's that's cool to hear that, that you know, that students can be have like peer help, mm -hmm. you know, that she says, like, don't give up. Like there's people out there. You just have to don't just hold it all in yourself, but reach out. And um, as you were saying, you know, for parents, don't give up, mm -hmm. you know, because you saw Genevieve through hard times and um, there may have been some temptations to give up or, you know, yes. but you didn't. Yes. And, and coming to to accept the universal message that our children are here to create a sense of belonging through themselves. Right. We're here to experience it with them but we're, we're not here to mold them into who we expect them to be, right? And we need to share the space with them and being able to learn about themselves. And we need to do that through empathy and through um, that restorativeness of acceptance, right? And, and allowing them a space to feel as though they're human, right? Humans have trials and make errors, but we, we all are here with the same purpose of feeling belonging and feeling as though we can live this life in fulfillment. Yeah. Well, I, and do you have any other final comments that either you've said a lot and it's been powerful, but is there anything else that you would like to? <clears throat> um, yeah, just, you know, what people say doesn't define you, you know, being told, you know, get put on medication or calm down, just sit down. Like, you can always take that step up and it's it's never a bad thing to have bad traits, you know, just taking the negative things about yourself and creating your strengths with that. You know, mm -hmm. always take the step up and, you know, find what, find what will make you a leader, find what will make you a better person. Nice, thank you. Yes, I, I agree on that 100%. I, I've just learned in working with youth uh, that a lot of the times just us suppressing what we feel is wrong is actually us not accepting the greatness that, that they have to share with us, right? Uh, because we can't all align to one, one belief, one system. And I feel as though when, when our youth are, are doing something that makes us feel uncomfortable, it's just an opportunity to learn of, of what, how we can accept change and how we can accept uh, differences in, in each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important to highlight with our youth and with, with the people that we have in our life. Absolutely, thank mm -hmm. you. And I, I know it's, it's strange to ask this, Genevieve, but if you were to say something to your mom, just a, maybe a gratitude or something, what would you say? Absolutely. I would say thank you. You know, the biggest, I think the biggest reason why I am who I am today is because my mom and 
my stepdad, of course, they always, they always encouraged me. They always told me they were proud of me. They're always there, and even when they struggled and they were young and when they were getting through it, you know, they, they prioritized me and, like, my life is, like, all my things have to go to you. I owe you guys, like, everything. And what about you to her? I would say thank you for allowing me to be part of this journey. And I'm grateful that you have been able to find yourself and feel like that's genuinely who you want to be. And I am excited that through in time, you'll be able to be proud of yourself and know that this was all through your your work right and your perseverance thank you janelle and genevieve for helping us gain understanding of the support that students and parents need to reach their potential and their purpose in the school community we hope that this video and other restorative justice practices resources on the san diego county office of education's restorative justice practices webpage will help support your efforts to build a healthier and more caring community.